I'm going to do tonight a little bit different, I guess, than I've ever done before. <clears throat> I've, I'm really not sure how, how far this little sharing will go, so I'm going to divide it up possibly in 20-minute sharings. So we'll go 20 minutes, take a little break. Uh, those of you who get bored or need to go, have whatever, things going on, you may go. And then possibly go another 20 minutes and then have a break and then start again. <clears throat> so that'll be a little over an hour if you include breaks and stuff like that. And the second break probably wouldn't be all that long. <clears throat> so let's see how it works. Um, and um, the title of what I want to share tonight is, Does God Really Need Anything From Us? <clears throat> Does God really need anything from us? I have a, a faithful person who regularly <clears throat> emails me and keeps me um, searching and keeping my heart open before the Lord. And uh, this person uh, just, they're really good because a lot of times they'll just send a scripture, just one verse or a couple of verses. And the uh, verse that they sent was Acts 17, and it's verse 24 through 25. <clears throat> you don't have to turn there because I'm going to read it, but if you do, do want to, go ahead. Um, and then I'm going to just add a few verses that follow that. Acts 17, 24. God that made the world and all things therein, seeing that he is Lord of heaven and earth, <clears throat> Dwelleth not in temples made with hands, verse 25. Neither is worship with men's hands as though he needed anything, seeing he giveth to all life and breath and all things. All right, and so <clears throat> I think this could possibly, uh, and, and even if it wasn't along the line I'm going to share, I think it was... Um, to say that, you know, we talk a lot about the Lord and loving the Lord and being a blessing to the Lord and, and instead of us being the focus of everything that, <clears throat> um, that we would function more as the bride of Christ or more as that which is after his kind and that, um, that emphasis would uh, would seem wrong in light of just this simple phrase right here, as though he needed anything. See, it, he giveth light to all in breath and, and all things. <clears throat> and uh, I want to just address that again. The person who sent me this may not have that in mind at all, but I could see how that scripture would put someone on a thinking path. And uh, thinking, thinking is good as long as it's God's mind. <laughs> let's try to stick with that. Um, but, the, but let's move on. I'm going to read the next couple of verses, verse 26 through 29. <clears throat> and hath made of one blood all nations of men for to dwell on all the face of the earth, and hath determined the times before appointed and the bounds of their habitation, that they should seek the Lord. If haply they might feel him, feel after him and find him, though he be not far from every one of us, and most of us are familiar with verse 28, for in him we live and move and have our being, as certain also of your poets have said, for we are also his offspring, for as much then as we are the offspring of God, <clears throat> we ought not to think that the Godhead is likened unto gold or silver or stone graven by art and man's devices. So anyway, just, the, just thinking that the thought was along this line, of course, now he only sent verse 24 and 25. My response was this. Since he... Uh, since he made it all, he needs no created things, in parentheses, as mentioned in your verse. 
But as seen in the first commandment, there is something on a different plane that he considers highly special from us. And I want to pursue along this line a little bit, <clears throat> but to begin with, we'll, we'll delve into scriptures that you're pretty familiar with, um, but let's just start with uh, Genesis 1.1. Genesis 1.1. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Okay, so what it's about to unleash upon us is uh, a plethora of things that he has brought forth, that he has created. <clears throat> and the word Genesis means beginning or beginnings, beginning. And if you'll notice uh, in verse 26, which we've discussed many times before, and my question was, what did God want? Okay. So what we're going to see is that, that all these created things he actually made for us. And we'll look at the scriptures that literally say that. But in verse 26, he says, and God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness. And so you have God, not just Father, not just Son, not just Holy Spirit, but God said this, let us in our image. So you have an agreement among the Godhead. <clears throat> and the, that agreement wasn't, well, you know, it wasn't, well, let's save the world at that point. Let's save the world, you know. Let's make the world a better place or this or that. It was a call for something more that was in his heart to make everything in the first place. Everything else, he, he didn't, you know, as the scripture said in Acts, he really didn't need trees, you know, and buildings and stuff like that. He didn't need all that stuff. We're the ones who enjoy all that. And rightly so, because he made it for us to enjoy. But when you talk about his heart, how much time do I have now? <laughs> okay, thanks. <laughs> when you talk about his heart, <clears throat> you talk, uh, we're talking about the things that have to be discovered. We're talking about things that he doesn't, because he does, you know, and you remember this, that when the spirit of truth comes, he will not speak of himself. He speaks of Jesus. Jesus comes, he speaks of the Father. Um, they don't, speak of themselves as it were they live they're so unselfish that they their emphasis is someone else and that's what brought him brought jesus to the cross you know someone else well all of us all right so the need came up but before there was a need and i don't i want to go too long on this because most of y'all know this little part but but before the need arose before there was a need he had something on his heart, and it related to this verse here. Let us make man in our image and after our likeness. Okay. And then the very next verse, interestingly enough, because there's two parts to it. And let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowls of the air and over the cattle and over the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So you have... God blessing. You have uh, his care. You have all of these things. But when it comes to his side, getting what his side requires, it requires a response from us. It requires something real, not just religious. And that's important because God's, God's not, you know, uh, as I say, you know, I don't believe God is religious. Uh, I don't believe Jesus is a Christian. He's God, for God's sake. He was God before anybody ever used the word Christianity. So, uh, you know, um, and he just is. He just is, and he was, and he is, and he is to come. And that's, that means there's some discovery on our part, just not just to know his heart, but to find the ways that that can be brought about for him since all he does is give and give and give and give and give. All right, so um, 
we see that God wanted after one after his kind. Oh, I got the chalkboard, but no chalk. <clears throat> um, I'd use the marks a lot, but it wouldn't show up. Thank you, ma'am. <clears throat> All right. So. Beginning, beginning, beginning. Yeah, so you might see if there's a, well, never mind, I can do it. <clears throat> the beginning, the beginning is Genesis. The Genesis or the beginning of, of all things. And from his heart, when he speaks, he wants after his, one after his kind. So Genesis is also, when you take this little part off there, is the word gene or seed or and then you if you know the scriptures which i know that you do know the scriptures <clears throat> you will know uh and we can see that in, starting in verse 11 but you see that everything starts coming forth from a seed then a seed there's a gene there's a this and that and and uh well let's look at verse 11 here <clears throat> and god said let the earth bring forth grass the herb yielding seed and the fruit tree yielding fruit after its kind whose seed is in itself upon the earth and it was so and the earth brought forth grass and herb and yielding seed after its kind and the tree yielding fruit whose seed was in itself after his kind and God saw that it was good and just to give another example is verse 24 and 25 but this goes all the way through all the way through really literally all the way through until uh, through Noah, where this kind of wording is used, verse 24, God said, let the earth bring forth the living creatures after his kind, cattle and creeping things, and the beasts of the earth after his kind. And it was so, and God made the beasts of the earth after his kind, and cattle after their kind, and everything that creepeth upon the earth after their kind, and God saw that it was good. And we're not going to go into, most of you looked at my book, on the bride of Christ and and this whole story where Adam is put to sleep and uh, bride is taken out of his side and how that's a picture of the Christ on the cross and out of his death came not just saved people but the very bride of Christ <clears throat> we're not going to go into all that I trust that most of you know that uh, and, and it can be found in that book if you need to but verse uh, uh, Verse 24, also just saying that same thing. And what we see here is he wants seed. He wants seed. Now, you know, like in, for example, in uh, Galatians 3.16, um, that Paul's argument that he's not talking about the Jews but about Christ in us is the use of the word seed. He saith not unto seeds as of many, but unto thy seed, which seed is Christ. And he starts emphasizing, he starts pushing that point, that the point is Christ and the point is Christ in you and the seed, the seed is Christ in you, the hope of glory. <clears throat> All right, so he wants seed. He wants his seed. I mean, again, that's what he starts with. You know, he, he could have just said, okay, everything just be. You know, because I want seed, and it's going to bring forth, but it's not just going to bring forth. It's going to bring forth after its kind, and, it, and the fruit that it has is going to be seed fruit, not just Christian works. It's going to be seed fruit. It's going to be, we're going to be after his kind after all. The original thing that was in his heart, that's the goal. That's the point. So, so it is his seed. He wants his seed, but he wants his seed to bring forth. Well, that would, if you take that on the, the, the level of the bride of Christ and whatever, then, then it's bringing forth Christ in the body, through the body. And then, but he wants his seed to bring forth in the earth. In the earth. This isn't just, this isn't just some future, far away, you know, and it's not just it's not just world evangelization. God bless it, and everyone you know. I've been a missionary, my wife and I, and stuff like that, and believe in it. But it's it's certainly if if that's all there is, then he's not getting his seed. And he may be getting souls, but is he getting his seed 
You know, are we being conformed to the image of Christ? Is, is that work being done? <clears throat> Which is, again, not my main point here. So, so in, the, in the Genesis, the gene, everything comes forth by the gene, by the seed, by, and that's called beginning, Genesis. That's called the beginning. See, and you get that, you get that in um, Gospel of John, you know, in the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word was God, okay? All things were created by Him, so the beginning to God is before creation, according to that. In the beginning, the beginning, He's marking the beginning as the Word, the seed, and then He says, the seed, the Word, made all things and we call creation the beginning he calls the gene he calls the seed the beginning and he also calls it the end because it's going to produce if if left to be who jesus is in us instead of conforming him to our image or instead of um you know conforming him to religion, to our religion. Um, we set about to be conformed to his image. And you know, there are plenty of scriptures on that. And so, uh, you know, since these are short, I'm not, I, I can't run to every scripture that we normally would, but most of you know these scriptures. All right. So, so we see that, you know, then he's, then he's talking about seed, and you're going to bring forth after your kind, and you're an animal, but you're going to bring forth after your kind, and everything's going to come forth by seed, and everything's going to come forth by life. If it doesn't come before, by life, it's not kind, and, you know, and he's doing all this stuff. But see, God had something greater in mind than just being a farmer. He was, everything was there to speak of the things that were in his heart, not just blessings in other words okay oh good he gave us he gave us a cow thank god you know but he's speaking of a certain reality of christ coming forth as kind through us okay so um uh, i wrote down here he wanted god has bigger plans god wanted a bride <clears throat> and he wanted that you know Many of you have heard me share on the difference between the church and the bride. And I don't, I don't see that as a difference of people, but as a difference of maturity that people walk in. It's just a design, it's one's a designation for the level of maturity they're at church, and the other one is a designation of the level of maturity that they're at bride. But they're not really separate because we're all of the same seed, you know. Some people would divide that all up, so oh, I'm part of the bride or all this kind of stuff. Well, you know, that's, that's totally not God's heart, the, that sort of attitude. Um, and so um, he's wanting, and we see that in the book of Revelation. And Kelly, you'll have to flag me when I get to that certain point, that, the exact point. Um, he... You, you see it in the book of Revelation, the wrap-up, last few verse, uh, chapters. You see, you know, the, the angel, the messenger of God saying to John, who's a literal apostle and has gone around the world and pastored and done all this stuff, have you seen the wife of the Lamb? Have you seen the bride, the wife of the Lamb? And he goes, no. <laughs> and he goes, well, come here, let me show her to you. Okay, and so... There we began to find the fulfillment of what was in his heart, it, that he wanted that which was after his kind, according to the scriptures, something that would love him back instead of just love everything he can do for them. Oh, look, you know, oh, look at the gifts, look at the jewels, look at, the, look at everything that you use to make me look great and to glorify me and all this kind of stuff instead of saying you know what is what do you need what is in your heart what is what is going on you know what can i do for you and that hence we have that thing of um, 
does God really need anything? But it wasn't just to love back that we desired to do that. That we desired to do that. Okay. And so to make sure that that was given to us to be able to, that desire could be in us, but it had to be us, he gave us free will. He gave us free will. And in free will, we can choose. We can choose how we relate to him. We can choose um, to what degree we know him, to really know him, you know. Uh, in, in the Old Testament times, a lot of times, um, there were arranged marriages. And, you know, well, you're going to marry this guy's son, and it's going to make a better kingdom and stuff like that. You know, and she's going, look, I don't even know this guy. And what's he look like? I mean, that's just, you just start with that. <laughs> what's the guy look like? Yeah. And then, uh, and then you, you begin to know him more than that. But some people, they enter into a relationship with the Lord, and they're not really, it's not a constant, you know, I want to know you. I mean, how many of you, any of you, that you don't have to, this rhetorical, but if, you, if you're married or ever been married, how many of you have that situation where uh, you got married and about two years in you found out that the person you married, this is particularly girls find out about guys, <laughs> that this is a completely different person than I thought I, I had married. And then you get a bit 10 years in, you go, you know, you find out things you never knew, good, some, some good and some bad, you know. Uh, I had no idea that you, you know. Go to your room. And, you know, and you just begin to discover things. And some, like I said, some good and some bad. <clears throat> and free will has to come into play over and over in a relationship to choose again. It, re it really is true. You really do. I mean, you, you can say, well, I said I, I do or I will, you know, in my wedding vows, but there's times when you can't picture your wedding ceremony anymore and you don't remember your vows and your spouse is an, acting like an idiot and you have, to, you have to recommit. There has to be a recommitment of the heart. Okay? All right. So we're going to stop there, take a little break. Went pretty quick. See, that was good, right? And um, we'll make it a fairly short break because we hadn't been that long. So if you need to go to the restroom or something, feel free to do that. All right.